Today's lecture is about the super heterodyne receiver. We will start by the introduction and the motivation. Then we'll go on to the general block diagram. Then I divided the lecture into four different questions. If we can answer these four questions, we will be in good shape. What is the intermediate frequency? Why do we need the intermediate frequency? Why up conversion is better than down conversion? And why we filter at the radio frequency stage? So, as an introduction, I would like to give you an idea about the basic radio system and the standard by the Federal Communication Coefficient, the FCC regulations. For the AM radio, the bandwidth given for the AM radio starts with 530 kHz and it ends at 1600 kHz, that's 1.6 MHz. Every channel is occupying 10 kHz. The bandwidth of every channel is 10 kHz. In some countries there are some variations, like the bandwidth would be 9 kHz. So how many channels can we afford within the AM radio? If you subtract the maximum minus the minimum, we get more than 1 meg, that's the total given bandwidth, divide by the bandwidth for every channel, that's 10 kHz, and we get more than 100 stations. The modulation technique used in the AM system is the double side band suppressed carrier. The allocated intermediate frequency is 455 kHz. We did not explain yet what's the intermediate frequency, but for now we just need to know what the number is. So IF is 455 kHz. Uh, for the case of FM radio, the spectrum for the FM broadcast is from 88 kilohertz, megahertz, sorry, 88 megahertz to 108 MHz. Frequency of FM is at higher frequency range compared with the AM. Now every channel now takes 200 kilohertz instead of just 10 kilohertz. So there's a huge increase in the bandwidth requirement for the case of FM compared with the case of AM. Now the intermediate frequency is not 455 anymore, it's 10.7 MHz. Okay, now let's motivate the concept of superheterodyne reception. If you look at the entire spectrum, there are lots of channels here. I'm showing, I'm sharing with you the double sideband spectrum. So whatever we have on the right hand, we'll have a mirror image here. All right, now let's say that we're interested in this channel, the 570 kilohertz, the one shown in red. If you want to receive this signal, then you need a band pass filter, which is very sharp at your frequency of interest, and then you need to do demodulation. If you change your mind, you need a sharp filter, now you have to tune a different frequency. The requirement of having a tunable filter and sharp filter is expensive. You need a costly filter because it should have high Q, high quality factor. Equality may be measured as a ratio between the center frequency relative to the bandwidth. So we have very high band frequency compared to the small bandwidth. This means we have a high Q. It's difficult to make this kind of filters, especially if they are tunable. You want to change from one channel to another. So what should we do? We are going to use superheterodyne receivers, as will be explained next. The concept of superheterodyne receiver can be summarized into three main steps. So the first step, we're going to frequency translate from RF, from radio frequency, to the intermediate frequency. So the signal in its radio frequency must be shifted to the IF frequency. It was 517, now it has to be moved to 455 kilohertz. The next stage, or the next step, once we translate to IF stage, is to use a band pass filter. This band pass filter is fixed, but yet it has a sharp bandwidth of 10 kHz. Now, applying this filter to the incoming signal, what we get is only the signal of interest. What remains now is to do the demodulation to bring this signal back to... Alright, here we show the general block diagram for the super heterodyne receiver. Let's start right at the left. This symbol represents the antenna. Whatever we receive is going to be fed to the first stage, which is the radio frequency stage, the RF stage. 
the first block is a bandpass filter and an amplifier so it, it filters the signal and amplifies it the arrow shown through the block indicates that this block is tunable adjustable variable similarly we have another block here which has the same arrow which means that this block can be adjusted can be modified now the, the, the two arrows are tied together the gang together which means that the modification will be done simultaneously at the same time now once you get your signal get it filtered and amplified we need to do multiplication this multiplication with the local carrier will result in frequency translation this is a frequency shifter or a frequency converter if you like a mixer what it do it what it does it will change the radio frequency into intermediate frequency so we need to properly select the local oscillator such that the resultant frequency will be the IF stage the 455 kilohertz now we have the same signal of interest but it's with a different carrier frequency once you get your signal into IF stage now you can use envelope detection to detect the signal in the case of uh, the AM radio and once your signal is in baseband you can use an audio amplifier before you get your signal into the speaker now for the case of FM receiver the envelope detector may be replaced or may be preceded by a discriminator or we can use a phased lock loop whatever kind of FM demodulation can be used now you need to be able to reconstruct the diagram and know the function of every component now what is the intermediate frequency the intermediate frequency is a fixed frequency for the AM it's located at 455 kilohertz and we will do what we will do there we'll have a band bandpass filter which is sharp to pick the signal of interest the bandwidth of this filter would be 10 kilohertz now let's look at the diagram here this is the channel that we are interested in with the center frequency of FC what we see here is just the mirror image the color is just for illustration we know that the right hand side of the spectrum is equivalent to the left hand side of the spectrum and our filter is just now shown here the IF filter does not move now instead of moving the filter to pick the signal we're going to move the signals into the window of the filter now the next question would be why do we need the IF stage why didn't we deal with it directly the answer is it's too difficult to design a tunable and sharp filter so we design a sharp but fixed filter fixed at the IF stage the channel to be filtered out should first be frequency shifted to the IF stage and then we can use uh, the IF filter that's the concept of the super heterodyne receiver so basically what we would do we bring the signal of interest to the filter here to translate the signal from radio frequency to intermediate frequency we can do it in two ways the first one is called up conversion where we multiply the incoming signal so basically <coughs> if we look at the RF signal it should be frequency shifted which means we are going to multiply by a local oscillator with the frequency FL or FLO what is this frequency of the local oscillator one option is to multiply by the sum that's the center frequency plus the intermediate frequency so in that case we are going to achieve the objective which means remember that if you multiply a spectrum by cosine with a certain frequency in this case it's the sum you're going to get two replicas of the spectrum one is your current spectrum plus the shifting frequency another replica will be minus the shifting frequency so starting with the first replica okay so if you add FC plus FIF to the current spectrum this is going to become 2 FCIF 2 FC plus FIF and the one which was negative IFC the negative would cancel with FC what remains is the intermediate frequency same thing will be done for the case of the negative image and mission accomplished we are going to achieve the objective of translating the frequency to the all right now we also we also can achieve the same thing by multiplying by a local oscillator with a frequency equal to the difference 
Now recall that we have the following spectrum. Again, we get two replicas. The first one is by adding. So Fc plus Fc, you get two Fc minus Fif. This image now, if you add the two values, will get Fc cancelled with minus Fif. What remains is minus, F, minus Fif. So the blue part of the spectrum would show up here. Okay, like this. Similar thing would happen when we subtract the carrier frequency. So if you subtract, then this is going to be to show up like this. Okay, what remains is this. Now the upper frequencies will will be taken care of by the filter, and we achieved our channel within the bandwidth. This is called down conversion when we, when we multiply by the difference. So in real systems, they use up conversion. So why up conversion is better than down conversion? Now. Let's look at the entire spectrum. For the AM radio, the minimum frequency is 550 kHz, while the maximum frequency is 1600. Now, if you use up conversion, it means your local oscillator will be the channel frequency plus FIF. So if, if you add FIF to these two, it means you're going to get 1005 kHz and a maximum of 2005 kHz. That's to say, if you want to receive this side of the spectrum, this channel, then you need to multiply by a local oscillator with this frequency. For the other extreme, you need a local oscillator with the following with the following frequency. Now, if you look at the ratio between the minimum and the maximum frequency, it's almost one to two, which means this frequency is double that frequency. For the case of down conversion, where we multiply by the difference, now to achieve the first signal, to get the first signal, you need to subtract for FIF which means the starting frequency the starting frequency for the local oscillator would be 95 kilohertz and the maximum frequency will be 1155 kilohertz now let's find the ratio between these two how much is this divided by that it's almost 1 to 12 so this number is 12 times this number now if you want to build a local oscillator is it easier to do it this way is it easier to design an oscillator that generates this range of frequencies or that range of frequencies now, what the absolute number is not very important. What's important is the ratio. Uh, so it's easier to design an oscillator with good performance where the ratio between the maximum and the minimum is small number. It's much easier to design this. This is hardware electronics. So people with electronic background will advise on this. So we see that the ratio in up conversion is smaller than that in the down conversion, which means it's easier to design. So the last question that remains is why do we still have filter at RF stage? Remember after the antenna we had a filter which we called the RF stage filter. If we are going to, be, to build an IF stage filter which is perfect and sharp, why do we need to filter again? Or before that? Uh, in the beginning I show you part of the spectrum. Now if you look at the entire spectrum and you start to do the translation and shifting, if you want, if you do the shifting, if you bring one this one to the to the first square, then automatically another channel will also show up in the other square. Which channel is that? The spacing between these two images of the filter is 2FIF. So for a given channel, the signal or the channel that's spaced by 2FIF is called the image station. The image station is the station that's spaced by 2FIF from the desired station as shown in the figure, which means that the, the reason for 2FIF is that the spacing between these two filters is going to be 2FIF. Because if you do the down conversion directly, or if you do the up conversion, which means you're translating the signal to the, to, the, to the filter, to the intermediate frequency filter, automatically another channel, channel will show up, which is the image station. And instead of getting one signal, you get two overlapping with each other. So what's the solution? We need a filter at RF, a filter that's not necessarily very sharp. It should be tunable, that's moving with your signal, but it doesn't have to be sharp because the objective is not to eliminate other channels, it's just to eliminate the image station. So our now tunable filter is not sharp. So instead of having tunable and sharp filter, we have a tunable but not sharp filter at the radio frequency. And then at the IF stage, we'll have a fixed but sharp filter. So with this filter, we can eliminate the image station. And when we do the down conversion or up conversion, when we do the translation, we get our signal without the image station. And the signal now is clear. Now let's take an example with numbers. If you, if you think about the channel 
centered at 882 kilohertz what's the what's the image station for this channel it will be 1792 how did we get this number you add 2 FIF to this number IF is 455 which means 2 IF is going to be 910 kilohertz now add 910 to this you'll get 1792 kilohertz this is called the image station now with with the proper filter you can eliminate the image station and now we can get your uh, signal clear and without any problem now, this is to some as the image station concept now what happened if we didn't do this what uh, would happen if we didn't have this principle of superheterodyne that's we we convert directly to the base band we have two problems first it will be difficult to tune because we have a, have a sharp filter and and also tunable filter which is not easy to design alternatively you have to have a gap in the spectrum between the channels because your filter will be e will be relaxed but in that case you need to have a guard band between the channels which translate to less number of channels and this is the beauty about the super heterodyne receiver which has RF and IF stage to test our understanding let's now try to answer the following two questions what is the image station for the AM channel at 850 kilohertz? Recall that to find the image station, we need to add 2 times FIF, that's 2 times 455, or 910 kilohertz. We need to add 910 to the following number. The second question says, what is the image station for the FM channel at 106.1 megahertz? Now, you don't add 2 FIF, you don't add, sorry, 2 times 455, you need to add 2 times 10.7, to this number why because it's an FM channel it has different intermediate frequency thank you for listening